Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church, where conversations, community, and culture converge. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. We are excited you are joining us here for episode 12. I think we're going to have a great discussion this afternoon, this morning, this evening, whenever you are listening to it. Uh, Today, we are going to talk about educational choices for our children. Thought this would be a good topic because here on staff we have we have different options, different uh, options that we have chosen for our children and our families, and so thought it'd be a good opportunity just to sit down and talk about this. And we've had maybe some brief discussions about this in the offices over the years, and uh, obviously we talk a lot, a lot about how our children are are doing and what they're involved in, and uh, really not a topic that we would ever talk about on a Sunday morning. Um, because we, and I think what you'll hear from us as you listen, we really think this is a, an area of personal conviction to some degree, and, and we, are, we are blessed. We are blessed to be able to choose. Uh, we know that here in the United States, we're able to choose different educational options. Uh, maybe the three biggest that we, we think of is, is public school, homeschooling, and then private school. And of those, uh, there's there's a lot of things to think about when we ch- when we when we choose our educational opportunity for our kids. But man, as I thought about this conversation, uh, we we really do um, have a blessing to be able to choose. Uh, thinking about other people throughout the world, that I mean, education isn't even an option. They can't even think about which option of education. There just isn't op- education. Um, and then as we th- think about being here on staff and, and the members here, we we also understand that because of our, our the needs of our kids and because of our life circumstances, um, we really can can look at those options as viable options. And uh, maybe we'll get into some of that um, as as we go through this conversation. But to know that sitting around this table, sitting on this couch together. Um, we really, we really do have options in even thinking about southwestern Pennsylvania, where we live, some great options when it comes to all three of those. And so uh, we're excited to talk about this. And so I'm going to have each of you introduce yourselves uh, that we're, we are and what, what went into the choice that you made for your kids, uh, the, the grade levels your kids are at, the experiences that you've had uh, with that. And so, Allison, uh, why don't you start us off with this conversation? Sure. Um, Prior to having children, I was a public school first grade Mm -hmm. teacher for six years. And so when Jim and I began to talk about starting our family, um, public school was kind of the automatic option. Mm -hmm. Um, Our children would have attended um, the elementary school that I taught at, right down the road from our house, it seemed like a foregone conclusion. And um, when Lily was a preschooler, she went to a local Christian preschool, and we started to realize that that maybe there were choices, um, that maybe public school wasn't the only option. And at that point, I had resigned my position, so I was um, not teaching at that point anymore. And so as we um, saw other people in the church start to make homeschool um, choices for themselves, we started talking and praying about what that might look like in our home. And so both Lily and Cooper, Lily is now 16 um, in an 11th grade and Cooper is 13 in an eighth grade. And both of them have been homeschooled for their entire um, school career, except for those two years um, in Christian preschool. Joshua, you're next. Sure. Um, our, our children are uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. It's easy to say that now. You're it'll, practicing. It, it'll, it'll change <laughs> to where it won't be so easy to have three years in between. The change is coming soon. But um, so, you know, we, we chose the, the homeschool route from the beginning. So uh, with our oldest being 15, so we're looking at... Um, uh, nine or 10 years ago, made that decision. And, you know, primarily the decision was based on how we can provide them the foundation of, of God and, and biblical values from the very beginning. And, you know, as we talked about, homeschool is not the only way, but it's a way that we thought would be good for us. And it would be a offer a really strong foundation for them at their younger ages. Excellent. 
So over on my other side is Matt. So Matt, introduce yourself. Tell us about your kids and the choice that you made for them. Yeah. Hello. I'm Matt. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we have uh, two children. Uh, our daughter is 15 and our son is 11. And um, yeah, for all their school career, they've gone to public school uh, before Juliet started kindergarten, I believe it was, we did look into a private Christian school, um, thinking that may be a good way to introduce God even more into her life um, outside of being in our household and family and going to church and everything. Uh, there were there were a few things that uh, we opted, a few reasons why we opted against that. Um, but yeah, they've been uh, there in the Penn Trafford School District where I graduated from. So um, yeah, that's that's where we're at right now. Excellent. Yeah. So we made the same decision as Matt. Uh, my kids are 12, 11, and 8. Uh, they're involved in public school right now. And we moved a bit when we had kids. And so, you know, we really tried to take in context and knowing the school districts that were in the area and, um, you know, I think homeschool was, was an option that we seriously considered and realized that wasn't, that wasn't for us for different reasons. Um, but it's always been on the table, and I think it still is on the table for us. If um, You know, we've asked our kids at different times, you know, is something going on in school? Um, and I think maybe this is just my awareness of it, but it seems like more and more there's there's greater options or half an option here, half an option mm -hmm. there when it comes to mm -hmm. schooling, uh, where you can do um, d certain classes uh, at school and the rest homeschool. Allison, like you said, you could you could enroll one of your children mm -hmm. in a specific subject in mm -hmm. the public school. Right. Yeah. Um, there's different work programs that kids could have where they go to school for part of the day and then go go to work. And I. I, I can't remember the technical name for that. I call it work release program, but that's what prison is. That is, yeah, that is um, it. So I know that's not what, it, what it's necessarily called, but um, there's some good training programs there. And so, you know, we want we want to to recognize that our experience uh, is limited because, as you heard, none of us have children enrolled in, in private school, maybe a Christian school or a different type of private school. Um, it's not an option that any of us took, but we have, we have church members that are teachers there. We have church members that have their kids enrolled in private schools, um, different private schools. And mm -hmm. so it's not just necessarily one in the area. And so we want to give some awareness to that being an option as well. So we'll go around again and I want you to give, um, maybe one reason, whether it's the main reason or not, but one reason you really felt led to, um, to pursue that that model of education for your kids but then on the flip side of that what is one is one of the bigger pitfalls that you see in that choice and how have you tried to overcome that pitfall so Allison go ahead okay um I'm fortunate in that I have a specific moment in time mm -hmm. that I remember being compelled to start thinking about homeschooling and it was Lily's second year in Christian preschool and I happened to be outside the door listening to the teacher interact with the children and someone had disobeyed or broken a school rule or something like that and I remember the teacher getting down on the level of the child and looking them in the eye and saying is that how God would want you to treat your friend is that what God expects from you and I remember thinking I want that to be part of of my children's education moving forward. And so while it seemed like public school was going to be the decision because I was a public school teacher, my relatives were public school teachers, it's in my blood. Mm -hmm. um, but that moment made me go home and say, I don't know, Jim, I'm starting to think that I want our faith to be able to be incorporated daily in the things that our kids are learning from an academic standpoint. And so that was that was what kind of began the journey. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what, what started it all. Cool. Um, so then when you started that journey of thinking about it, what, what was a pitfall that you knew could be a potential, uh, maybe con is another way to say it, of, of pursuing that? Sure. Um, 
I think the biggest one was the fact that I felt like their entire education and everything that they would learn fell on my shoulders. Mm. And that's a scary place to be, especially um, with someone that has perfectionist tendencies, because I was so worried I was going to miss something. I was so worried that um, there was going to be a gap at some point in their education. Um, and so I was putting a lot of pressure on myself. Um, but a way that we kind of worked around that pitfall is um, some of the different opportunities we've availed ourselves of over the years. Um, we were very involved in a local homeschool group where other um, people were able to be my children's teachers for specific subjects. Uh, we just went one day a week and they would be there for the day and they would get to interact with their peers and learn um, different topics throughout the year. Um, both of my kids have taken some online classes. Um, we've never done like the charter school, you know, the cyber school kind of thing, mm -hmm. but this is like where you pay a tuition for one particular class at a time. Um, and Lily is even um, currently doing a dual enrollment class um, through a college and that's online. Um, and so in order to kind of take myself out of the full equation, um, we've chosen to give them some alternative opportunities um, to be able to learn from other people in addition to learning from me. Thanks for sharing. Joshua? So, yeah, I don't, I don't remember exactly when the decision was made. My wife and I both went to public school growing up. So, and even, even I remember my wife saying that homeschooling had a little bit of a bad rap because maybe some of the people that were homeschooled where she grew up, they, it wasn't done well, it wasn't done responsibly. So I don't remember how all that happened, but my wife was passionate about it and that's the direction that we went. I think the big pro about it is that as parents, God has given us the, the role of protecting our children. And so homeschooling allows you a lot of freedom in the protection part and it limits their exposure. But flip that over to the con, is it limits their exposure to the real world. And you get as a parent, in some ways, you get to decide the timeline in which they're exposed to certain things. So it's a pro because of the protection that's there that we all wanna have in certain ways, but it's also a con because ultimately God is preparing us all to go out and be on mission to the world. And so we have to be familiar with the world we're going to be on mission of. So that's the pro and the con that I see. Yeah. Thanks, Joshua. Matt, what about you? What are some some things that went into your decision to make that? And then what are some pitfalls that you maybe potentially saw? Yeah, absolutely. The decision uh, for us was pretty easy. I'm not a school teacher and <laughs> Dana is not a school teacher either. And uh, we didn't think we would do a good job mm -hmm. as parents as being school teachers. Uh, so that was one of the main reasons why we uh, went into that. Yeah. I know several people who do uh, homeschool mm -hmm. as a great viable option. And like my sister, Allie does it where like, I would trust her with every single ch child, you know, in the world to, to teach. She's a <laughs> teacher, that's what she does, right? But then on the, on the flip side, I know some people that you're like, hmm, are, are they the best option to, to be teaching their kids what they're gonna need to learn as they grow up? And uh, that's where Dana and I fell. Like we, we are not the, the proper mm -hmm. option. Um, so yeah, that, that, was, that was part of the main reasoning that went into it. Um, the other reasoning uh, too, we're, we're in the Penn Trafford School District. And again, I'm a little bit partial, but I, it's a great school district. Um, I think we need to be careful with public school and homeschool. What we see in the media, mm -hmm. If you see something, if you watch certain news channels, then your mindset going into it is every public school is teaching your kindergarten X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And if you take in other media outlets, every homeschooler is a backwards, can't interact with people, cultish type deal, right? Mm -hmm. And the reality is that's not true. I mean, the four of us here, we, we see what it's like with our children and everything. So I just want to put that out there. Um, most of life is like in the middle, not the extremes. Uh, that being said, the uh, downfall of public school in my eyes, um, I guess just not having the complete control that I would like to have as a parent. But like Joshua said too, I mean, you got to have 
at some point they're going to be in the real world. So like shielding them versus not. And I don't yeah. Know. yeah. So I think like Matt, uh, we made a decision to go to public school and a lot of that, um, was based on where, where we found ourselves at the time. And like I told you, I think we would be open to different options still. Um, if our situation changed, um, we didn't know if my wife would be able to stay home and, and be able to do homeschool. We didn't know where, what school district we would end up. And so given the context we found ourselves in when our kids first started going to school, um, we, we felt like there would be a large gap in their education if it was left to us, up to us. Um, and we felt like the school that we found ourselves in, given the context when, when we sent our kids to school, would afford them the best education. And one, and one of the pitfalls, we're talking about pitfalls too, um, that I think Matt got into a little bit is that, okay, now, now we're handing our children over to someone else for six, seven hours a day. And some, some people, and like Matt alluded to, maybe it's from watching the media. It's this, you're handing your children over to the devil <laughs> and they're going to be indoctrinated. And because of my position at the church, because of our, our belief that, um, worldview and, Christian education can ha happens primarily in the house. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't asking our school to do that for us anyways. Mm -hmm. We weren't asking our educational choice to do that. And, and we thought, again, because of, because of our involvement in the church, because of our involvement in the life of other people, um, that gap would be made up in those areas. And so... Um, that was that was you know how we saw that pitfall happening, and I think what Matt says is is true a lot. Um, in my experience of a youth minister, I would go to conferences and different different things to hear um, speakers on various topics, and every once in a while, this alarmist mindset would pop up from the speaker or or someone else to say, uh, "This is happening in our society. We need to watch out." and uh, bathrooms are becoming this place where anybody could go and just um, things would be said like that. And that something I noticed over time is that no one had that firsthand experience. It was always a school in a different state or someone else. And, and, it, and that I believe those things are happening. And that's why I come back to in our context where mm -hmm. we are, I've not experienced that at all. Um, I've had maybe one interaction with someone that did experience something like that firsthand of, you know, something came through a teacher and the, the parent wasn't aware and it, it wasn't the best sounding thing. And um, I just, in all my years, haven't had a firsthand experience of that in our, our context. And um, so that's, again, why we made the choice we did. And conversations like this are so important because it shows that I think to the greater Christian community, we can sit in this room, make different choices for our kids and our families, um, and still love each other deeply. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just before this podcast going online and looking at some different opinions online, I'm just disheartened that people have um, such hard views towards others that they should be calling their brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm and taking things out of context and, and saying this person said something when they really didn't say something. And so I appreciate all of us being able to sit here and have this conversation. And I want those listening to be encouraged that we find ourselves making different choices in life, um, ultimately with the same goal in mind, right? That the goal isn't just to have our children educated. The goal isn't just to um, have our, our children look just like us. Our goal is is a desire to have our children be disciples of Jesus. And so we might pick different models of education, but knowing our end goal is the same, is, is to pass on the love that we have for Jesus to our children. And so um, we think that's an important part of this conversation as well. Yeah, just as we were talking about this and you were talking, it's, it's interesting and scary how the devil uses stuff that really shouldn't matter right like 
at the end of the day, who cares if you homeschool or if I homeschool or public school or whatever, like between Christians, like that's just one more thing the devil's using to divide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're doing what you think is right for your family. I'm doing what I think is right for my family. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's interesting, sad, Mm -hmm. scary, (laughs) all the above too. But Colossians 317 says, and whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And so while it's not quite written for this exact context, um, that idea of whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. So whatever educational choice you select, as long as you are seeking after God's direction in your life and his will for your family, you're making the right choice. They're really because there isn't a left or a right or a right or a wrong. There is just a choice for your family. Mm-hmm. And I know in our house, um, Jim and I revisit this question every single year. Mm-hmm. We have never been a, you know, we're only going to homeschool our children from, you know, kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, we always say, you know, given where our children are in their life or given their development or given their attitude towards schooling, um, you know, it, does something need to change for the following year? And when Lily um, was getting ready for ninth grade, we actually said to her, um, you know, up to this point, this decision has been ours as your parents, but we now trust as a ninth grader that you can speak into this a little bit. And so we said to her, do you want to go to public high school? Do you want to go to private high school? And ultimately it was her decision to remain homeschooled. Um, but even in the next few years of Cooper's schooling, you know, it may look to others like, oh, they'll finish out homeschool 100%. And maybe we will, but we still hold that all with an open hand that there may be something Cooper wants to pursue, um, you know, as a job or something in the future that maybe maybe public school or technical school or some other option is going to be better for him. And we're still open to that. I appreciate what Jeff said about, um, you know, just our expectations of the public space and how there can be a lot of probably extreme information out there. And sometimes as followers of Jesus, we need to step back a minute and say, are we expecting a secular government to disciple our children to follow Jesus? And that's a little bit of an unfair expectation. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if if they're, if they're fair and balanced, then, then we should be thankful for that. We shouldn't be expecting them to teach our children how to follow Jesus. I, I just think it's a... It's an unfair expectation. We have to be careful with that, though. Just personally, there are so many Christian teachers hmm. that teach in the public school um, that those influences, if you know, they're not necessarily praying with the kids or speaking the name of Jesus, but there being that safe space that they may not have at home uh, for them to come in and and not only learn, but kind of feel God's love in a way that, you know, they may not um, be doing that. Yeah. And I, th- those teachers give of themselves so much. Oh, yeah. And they, yeah. they with intentionality, are staying in those places because the indifference they know they can make. Right. So that's right. to be commended for sure. As a youth minister, um, the, the, the biggest difference I ever saw between, um, and the, it was in different areas. You could say kids' behavior. You could say kids' education. You could say their involvement in church. It always came down to parent involvement every single time. Um, eh, maybe I shouldn't say every time. Maybe there's a few exceptions. But parent involvement was so important um, when it's seeing one kid succeed and one not succeeding and define succeeding in a lot of different areas again. But um you know, how involved in the, is the parent in the homework? How involvement is the parent in the extracurricular activities? How involved is the parent in church? How involved is the parent in the spiritual life? It always came back almost every single time uh, to parent involvement. And whatever choice we make in this discussion, parent involvement doesn't end. Uh, for Matt and I, we're not just sending our child over to the public school saying, okay, the public school is going to do everything that we can't do. No, we're, we're still involved in our kids' lives. And Joshua and Allison aren't saying we're making this decision. Um, and 
that's going to be the end of it. They're saying, hey, we revisit this. We talk about it. We ask our kids to be involved in it. This this is parent involvement and everything. Sending a kid to a Christian school, we're not saying that's the best of both worlds because now they're getting a, the education from other people and they're getting Christian influence. Um, if the parent isn't involved, there's still going to be deficiencies there. And so parent involvement is so important in any area that we choose. You know, we're fortunate enough in our school district that Juliet came home one day and she's like, oh, hey, I joined Warriors for Christ. I was like, what's that? She's like, oh, it's a it's a Christian group at school. And, you know, they put on pep rallies for the sports teams and they pray for them before they get on the bus and go to away trips. They have prayer at the poll. And this is a district wide thing. They're prayer at the poll that I know we've been active in in the past and everything. So it is encouraging to see um, that there are still some school districts out there that aren't totally pushing away the name of Jesus. They're allowing it to exist in kind of a secular world, um, but allowing it to be there as well. So that was pretty neat to see. That's cool. Uh, you know, one thing that just on my heart to share with parents is that we just want to make sure that we're we're valuing them following Jesus more than any educational opportunity. And that could go with public or, or homeschool. Some people would go homeschool just because they feel like that's a better secular education. And so, and maybe some of, some of the folks listening here today are thinking about college choices. And, you know, you may have a child who's interested in a certain degree program, and maybe there's only a few places they can go, but what is going to, what are the spiritual ramifications of those things? So just encourage us to really put God first in these choices that we're, that we're doing for our children or maybe helping them make. Yeah, very important. And if any one of you have heard me talk before about family discipleship, you know that this verse, this passage is really important to me. Um, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So as God has called us to be the primary discipler in our children's um, lives, we notice that even in um, the seriousness of that passage in Deuteronomy, he doesn't say anything about your child's education as far as an academic context goes. So whether your children are at public or private or home school, you can still impress these things of God on them diligently. And you can still teach them about God when they lie down and when they get up and when you're walking on along the road or when you're sitting at home. And I think to me, that's the crux of this, that we can make whatever academic education decision that we want, but that we all are called to disciple our, our children in the things of God. Yeah, absolutely. And different families are going to have different circumstances that might limit some options in different ways. And so we want to be aware of that and just acknowledge that that's a reality for a lot of people and that we behind these microphones don't represent all of that. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not trying to make that decision for you because we know there's so many different circumstances that speak into the educational choices and model that you choose for your kids. And so we do hope this conversation was um, enlightening in some way. We hope that you understand our, our encouragement to all of our listeners to pursue Christ and pursue um, the, the conviction, the, the command from Deuteronomy and from Scripture to do the best with our kids. And, and again, that can look in different ways, but uh, we would love, you know, feedback on this conversation. We love conversations in the church hallways mm -hmm. as we discuss these different topics. And we're just thankful we can sit in this room with one another and uh, with you and have these discussions and have opportunities um, that we've pre been presented with. And so we are very blessed by God to be able to talk about these things and have so many of you give encouragement uh, to the things that we're doing here at NCC and beyond. So once again, I say thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, 
we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com.